Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome once again to Kingfisher's YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon, ching, 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 for notification of up and coming videos. Today I'm going to be talking about dogger traces from the boat. Okay, so it's a deep sea fishing one. It'll be dogger and gilbeck all mixed into one. Okay, so what we require to do this uh, demonstration is going to be very simply start on the right. Okay, this is a little lure bag that we use. Once we've tied our traces, we stick our traces inside it. Okay, so. That's the first thing. Second thing is going to be our trace holders. 090 Kingfisher Nylon. Okay. Um, number eight, glow in the dark uh, beads, as you can see. So these are our Kingfisher power swivels. Um, one and two, so it's size one is the big one, and size two is the one that comes off on the arm. This is size one Kingfisher power swivel. Alternatively, we can use a three-way Kingfisher swivel for the commercial boys. And of course, just uh, stopper beads. This is a size four stopper bead. Um, toothpicks. This is a 9876 Marutu hook. It's the J hook. The reason we use it, it's first of all offset. It's got a bent in point, so it's an eagle claw point. As you can see, it comes in. Very small barb. And of course, this hook is three extra strong. Alternatively, um, three, four, what's this? Three, four, eight circle hook. It's a size 30. Um, and again, it's a circle hook shape. Uh, bent in, offset, very important for dogger fishing, offset. Um, just another one on this hook over here that we do use. You can either use a size 28 or a size 30. I'm going to use a 28. I prefer a smaller hook for a dogger. Um, obviously, a sinker of your choice, cable tie, and I'll show you what we use that for. Um, smaller cable ties for rigging the bait, the live bait. Um, a little piece of Dacron, yeah, well, everybody knows what a lighter is, and uh, of course our braid scissors, that's a mustard braid scissors. So we're doing two traces today. We're going to be doing the circle hook version as well as a double J hook. So it'll be a double hook trace or a single hook live bait trace. Okay, so let's start off with the single hook live bait first. I'm just going to make some space here quickly guys. So what we're going to use for our live bait, dogger trace, um, single look on the bottom. Again, it's our Ato Marutu circle look offset. 090, size 8 glow bead. Number 1 power swivel. And of course our stopper beads, sinker and everything else like I've explained before. Okay. We're going to take some nylon. We're going to make it about 1.2 to 1.5 meters in length. Obviously, with a live bait, you need a lot of movement. Okay. So, taking our Marutu hook, we're just going to snell it. So, this is 090 Kingfisher. And the easiest way to do it is just to do our quick and easy snell. If you want to see how the snell is tied slowly, top right hand side corner, there's a little box there, just click on the icon and it'll take you through how we do the snelling of a circle hook. Okay, so there we go. There's my circle hook all snelled. I'm just going to cut this off. Cut off the tag end, and that's one. Let's make it about 
I'm then going to take one of my power swivels. And this power swivel, number one, is rated at 191 kilos, guys. So although it's very small, it's extremely strong. You'll never open it on a dogger. And again, all we're doing is tying a figure of eight. So figure of eight, go around one, two, three times. And again, top right-hand side corner, and you can see how we tie that figure of eight slowly again. So top right-hand side corner, just click on that icon. Slide it down. Cut off the tag end. So there is our first bit of the trace actually done. We're now going to take about half a meter, 50 centimeters of nylon, and we're going to put the sinker on. We're going to tie the sinker. So we grab another hook there quickly. And I'm going to put my glasses on too. <laughs> Two, three, figure of eight. Slide it down. Cut off. Now, a little trick for you guys out there that are ski boat anglers on how not to lose sinkers. It's pretty much taking your sinker, taking a cable tie, going through the eye, and pulling that down. Cut off there. So all you've done is create a loop on your actual sinker. Okay? The reason we put that loop there is so when your sinker does move, and uh, nine times out of ten you'll be on drift when you do fishing for dogger, when it comes across a rock or over the top of a wreck and that, that loop moves up. It protects the nylon from getting battered as it hits the actual rock or is pulled through the rocks and that. So that's what that cable tie is there for. It's to protect your sinker so you don't lose your sinker as easily. So let's just quickly tie that on. We'll go through. And again, it's a figure of eight. Pull through, slide down. Okay, so there it is there. Your cable tie with your little loop on it. And like I said, that loop basically will go along, hit the rock, and it doesn't get damaged as quickly as the monofilament nylon will. So it protects your sinker from getting basically stuck, first of all, and damaging the nylon, so when you wind up, you lose your sinker. So that can go along, hit the rock, and nothing's going to happen. Your sinker is going to last a lot longer when it's going through the wreck or over the actual reefs and that there. Cable tie, a little secret there. Okay. Now all we're going to do is take a little bead, a little stopper bead. Just want one of these quickly. Okay, here's your main line. Coming off your KP reel, your leader, your sinker is going to be over here. And the reason we keep this line quite short is because you want to keep your bait near the bottom. This is to allow your bait to actually move around. Okay, so there we go. So first of all, I've put my swivel on for my sinker. I then got my stopper bead, and the stopper bead is there to protect the swivel um, knocking against your knot once again and damaging your nylon. So when you tighten up onto your big dogger or heelback, it protects it. Okay, so here we go. We're going to tie a figure of eight straight on. One, two, three times, and back through, up and down, slide down, pull tight. Okay, so there we go. Just to show you quickly, that's what that bead does. It protects the swivel from damaging that knot. Okay, that's what it's there for. So there's your trace. Now what you want to do is attach your live bait. And how we do that is with a little piece of Dacron. 
and this is a 130 pound Dacron. The easiest way to do it, people say, but it's so hard to put the hook through the Dacron. All you do is take your Dacron and you just push it. So you can see over there, it becomes loose. You then take your hook through that area, slide it up and over. And again, all you're going to do, once you've got your desired length, which would be that length there, take your Dacron, just move it up and down a little bit. Take your hook straight through it. And there we go. Snip off the excess. Take a lighter. And just melt it. The melting part stops it from actually fraying open. Okay, so there we go. There's your Dacron that will move nice and freely for your live bait. We then take a cable tie. You can get them in red, you can get them in glow in the dark, black, white, it's up to you. Red I find is probably going to be the, the best color to use for it. And you take your mustard scissors and you cut it at a slight angle to give it a point. There we go. So you're cutting your cable tie to give it a point. The reason we give it a point is so when it goes through the eye or just above the eye of the actual mackerel, it'll go through a lot easier. And because it's stiffer as well, it doesn't flex under that actual eye part of the live bait. So you're going to take your live mackerel, mozzie, shad, whatever it is that you might be using, Take your cable tie through the, the R part of it like that. You're then going to put that through and pull it over your actual live bait. Take your scissors. Once you've got your live bait to the right size that you want it to be, and you pull it tight, and that's it. So now what it does is allow your circle look to move. So the dogger will inhale the actual mackerel, Start swimming off. Obviously, it's a running trace, so you feel gunk. Okay, the dog is there. Back wind two or three turns on it. The dog starts to swim away with it, and you just hold. And the circle look will obviously come out into the scissors of the mouth and sits perfectly. So that will basically come out to the mouth and sit in the side of the scissors of the dog. And of course, you tussle him all the way to the boat, and good to go. So there is your sliding trace for dogger um, using a live mackerel guys very quick very easy it works like a dream we've used it for a good couple of years we know it works okay so just run through it again little stopper here to protect the knot 50 to 40 centimeters of hook uh, sinker line onto a um, cable tie to protect your sinker. The sinkers these days are extremely expensive. 1.2 to 1.5 meters. If you find the doggers are feeding very shy, you make it longer, 1.5. But generally, 1.2 is more than ample for the dogger. Um, it's also far away from your sinker that might be moving. So another reason we use quite a long uh, hook snoot. And of course, the Maruta hook can't be beaten for catching dogger small piece of Dacron and your cable tie. It's as easy as that for catching dogger, guys, with live bait. Okay, so number one's finished. Double hook. I'm now going to show you the double hook, J-hook version for catching dogger. And again, what we use, 090. Um, obviously, we need a little... Uh, Trace holder to put it on. Our glow in the dark uh, number eight bead. Marutu hook, and I'm using a size 28 here. You can use a 28 or a 30. Um, Marutu hook, it's up to you. I prefer to go smaller. You can use either or, it's up to you. Okay, commercial, and of course, for the guys that really want to catch dogger, that one over there. Okay, so that's a one by two power swivel. 
It's rated at 191 kilos, so there's no way they're going to open it. I'm just going to use this one. It's just easier to tie with. One, two. And again, this is a double look version. Power swivel. This is the, the size one. Now, remember with these Kingfisher power swivels, the big eye goes to the top, the small eye goes to the bottom, and your hook snoot is going to come off on the side here. Okay, this is for live bait or for dead bait. Doesn't really make a difference there. Tie a figure of eight. Cut off. So there we go. That is the bottom, bottom part of the actual trace tie. We're now going to take the hook snoot part of it. And we're going to make it about 800, 600 in length. So we're going to make it about that long. That's going to move around if it's a live bait or follow behind the sinker. Okay, as the sinker goes. And remember, we're tying it with J hooks. Now, again, 500 to 600 in length. That's it there. Palomar knot or figure of eight. Figure of eight can't be beaten. One, two, three. It's quick, it's fast, and it works like a dream. Okay, so figure of eight tied on my Maruta hook. I'm going to take two glow-in-the-dark size eight beads. There they are there. The reason we use the glow-in-the-dark beads are for our dead baits that we're going to use. It just creates more light, more attraction in the water. And of course, you're fishing for doggers at night time, 90% of the time. So there's my glow bead onto that arm that comes off. So there we go. One, two, three times. Pull tight, cut it off. Okay, so if you have a look there, there is the glow bead on the line, there is my hook. Now, what you don't want to have happen is this glow bead to be sitting up here. So what we do is we take a toothpick and we peg the toothpick close to the hook as we can. That keeps the light and the focus of that little green little bead on the bait. Okay, so grab a toothpick. There we go. And all we do, it won't damage your line. You just take your toothpick, shove it into the hole, and break it off. Okay, so there's a toothpick inside there. Break it off. And you're good to go. You can actually adjust it a little bit if you want. So there's your toothpick next to it. Now the toothpick is not going to allow that little uh, thing to run down the line. And it's especially important when we get to the top hook, which is a lot longer. It's a meter in length. Okay. So let's just quickly get onto that. So the mid section, we're going to make 1.5 meters in length. And that goes to the big R. Okay, was it going to be straight up and down? One, two, three, figure of eight. We're going to take our next power swivel, and again, big one going to your leader, the bottom one going straight up and down. One, two, three. Cut off the tag end. Okay, so there we go. So that's pretty much what the trace is looking like at the moment. We're going to put that down on the ground, just easier to work with. I'm now going to take one meter of nylon. The top one is going to be bigger or longer than the bottom one. Okay, now take our glow bead again. Take our second J hook. And 
and we tie a figure of eight. One, two, three. Cut off. So just to give you an idea, there's our bead, there's our top hook. One meter in length, guys. Now again, we're going to put toothpicks in because we don't want that bead all the way up here and our bait sitting here because the traction is going to be to the glow bead. That's what's going to attract the fish. And of course, the smell is going to be sitting over here because that's where your bait's going to be. Whether it be a sardine or a mackerel, it doesn't make a difference. So again, we just take a toothpick. Break it off. And there we go. Okay, so that is the completed dogger trace. I'm just going to cut this off, obviously, because you're not going to have this done like that. So there's the completed dogger trace. Now what we do, very simply to store it, you're going to make up about five or six of these before you go out. Take your little yo-yo, put your hook through there, and we just wind it up nicely. So that one is done. So that is your double J hook. For the old school guys that like to wind down and hit the fish, that's the J hook version. For the newbies, circle hook. You cannot beat it. I'm going to show you this one for the circle hooks. Okay, again, Ato circle, that's a Marutu. And I'm going to tie that one exactly the same as I did with the previous one. But I'm just going to show you what the trace looks like at the end of the day. Here we go. The circle hook one is just slightly longer in length. And you give the fish a little bit longer to actually feed in with a J hook. Okay, again, so there's your, your sinker, the bottom part of the R. Slide it along. Cut that off. Okay, so there's your sinker part all sorted out. And like I explained to you, the cable tie is there to protect the knot from getting damaged. <clears throat> With the J hook, we made it short, 600. With the circle hook, we just make it longer. We make it a meter in length. So both of them are going to be a meter. So I'm just going to do two meter lengths. There we go. Okay, so we're using 090 Kingfisher line onto our Marutu circle hooks. And again, just take two circle hooks out. And we snell it, one, two, three, four times around. So we're just snelling the circle hook. And of course, if you want to see how to do the circle snell a lot slower, top right hand side corner, there's an icon there, press on that. Okay, so there's the first one done. Second one. One, two, three, four. You can go five, six times, it's up to you. Done. And again, two of our size eight glow beads, chartreuse in color. The reason we use chartreuse, it just glows better at depth. And obviously shine a light on it when you're on the deck of the boat <clears throat> before you drop down. It'll just allow the, the bead to glow a lot longer, guys. And of course, it's about attracting the fish as best as possible. Okay, so the one that comes off, the one that spins around, is what we're going to attach the first one to.
a little bit of lubrication there so we don't burn the, the knot when we pull it tight. 1.5 meters in length. That goes to the top R, which is the bigger, the bigger R, if you want to call it. There we go. Figure of eight. Put this on the floor quickly. Grab another power swivel. Like I said before, you can use the Kingfisher three ways. They are a lot cheaper. But, of course, these rotate a lot easier. So when your bait's going down, obviously it knots itself up. So just a little thing to stop that from knotting. When you hit the bottom, just wind down three or four turns and lift it up again. That will undo that round knotting part that you've got when your, your bait hits the bottom there. And I'm talking about when you're using dead baits, guys, not the live bait. Okay, figure of eight. Take our Marutu hook, straight onto the small one, one, two, three. Okay, so there we go. So that's the second one. There's the first one over there. Okay, I'm just going to stand up quickly. So that's what your trace basically looks like at the end of the day. But don't forget to peg that glow bead down. Okay, when I say peg it down, um, take your toothpick and if you find that your toothpick that you have is a little bit on the small side, just double it. Go like so. Put that in. Push it. And you can cut it and break it off or do whatever you want. But that will prevent that toothpick from moving. Keeping the light concentrated on your bait. And again, rigging the bait, it's a dead bait for a, a mackerel or a sardine doesn't make a difference you just go straight to the bottom lip through the top between the eyes and that is all you need to do with the dead bait ones let's just get our second one that we haven't pegged down yet toothpick toothpick so rigging your bait for your dogger or your gilbeck exactly the same just literally straight through the bottom jaw coming out the top jaw. That hard part of the sardine or the mackerel is all that you want to do. And of course, if you've got a mackerel, you can flap the mackerel down the tail as well. Just to give it a little bit more movement. Um, generally, what we do is we put a live bait on the bottom and a dead bait on the top hook. Okay, so live bait at the bottom moving around and a dead bait on the top hook and we'll see whether the dogger wants a live bait or the dead bait. Okay, to store this whole trace system, obviously we're just going to cut that off because we don't use that. With a circle hook on our yo-yo. So basically it goes in over there. You see there's a loop there, a little hole. Go down. And we just roll it up nice and tightly. Okay. Oops. There 
there is our trace. So that is the circle hook version. That is the J-hook version. Um, and I just want to show you how this little rigging system actually works. So you basically take it here. It's a lovely storage system to keep on the boat. You can put 10 to 15 uh, traces in it. Easy to carry when you go fishing for your dogger. It doesn't lie around. You open it up. You take whichever one you want out. Guys, these things from Teza are absolutely phenomenal. They work extremely well. Obviously, ice cream container with a whole lot of sinkers with your cable ties on. It just saves a lot of time when rigging. So, yeah. Any questions, come and see me here at the Kingfisher. All the tackle that you see that we've used here is available from our Kingfisher stores as well as leading tackle stores nationwide. Go out there and catch dogger, guys. Have fun.